What's up, kings and queens? It's your boy, Dan, from Daft Previews, and we did it, baby. Three days in a row. We made another 5.4 units yesterday, and we were so close for another couple bangers, but... Hey, three winning days in a row. We're about 20 units up in the last three days. For those of you guys who have been following, well done to you. Now today, I'll be doing what I usually do. I'll be taking you through outlier.bet. I'll be sharing my screen. We're going to go through the most comprehensive NBA player prop preview you are going to see. We'll go through all the key players. We'll talk about their matchup. We'll look at all their lines. We'll look at their history. And I'll basically find out what's good and what isn't. I'll tell you. At the end of the video, when it's all said and done, I have a pinned comment with my final bets if you choose to ride with me. Now, let's go. So we're kicking things off with the Milwaukee Bucks versus the Los Angeles Clippers. Now, Giannis Antetokounmpo is a game-time decision in this one. The Clippers aren't a back-to-back. PG, Kawhi, James Harden, they're all game-time decisions in their last game. Now they're on a back-to-back. None of them game-time decision. You tell me what, that, what that's all about. But... Let's jump into it, shall we? We'll start with these Clippers, start with James Harden. So just got done on the hook by James Harden. Massive took his unders on his rebounds and his points, and he collected 11 rebounds, two rebounds in the last minute. Killed my life, but let's talk about it. So his points prop, 18 and a half points. He's got a great matchup here against the Bucs. I don't defend point cards quite well. He's covered this in six out of his last 10 games, and he scored 29 points the last time he played the Bucs. Now, all signs point to an over in this one. I'm personally not going to be playing it. And the reason why is, leading into the last game, James Harden had a shoulder strain on his left arm, which is his shooting arm. That's why I took the under. He went under in his points prop, and he scored 14 points. And I'm pretty sure almost every single shot that he took was a three-pointer. So he didn't attack the rim, didn't take too many shots at all. I'm just checking the box score right now just to double-check that. So James Harden... Yeah, he was 4 for 10, and all 10 shots were three-pointers. So he didn't attack the rim whatsoever. I don't know if that was an injury or by design, but yeah, didn't take one shot inside the paint. So I'd be a little bit hesitant to take this prop just in case there is an injury there, but all signs are pointing to an over. If you want to look at his three-point prop, he did attempt 10 of those today against the Bulls. The line's at 3.5 plus 146. Tough matchup here against the Bucs. Four out of his last 10. Did make five three-pointers the last time he burst the Bucks. Looking at his assist prop, lines at eight and a half plus money. He's covered in three out of his last ten. Tough matchup here against the Bucks. He only had eight assists against them last time. And his rebound prop. He killed me today. He had this very poor patch, and then he comes in, 11 rebounds. The matchup isn't good nor bad. He's covered in four of his last ten. Had four rebounds against the Milwaukee Bucks last time. Having a look at Paul George now. Now, Paul George, his points prop, 20 and a half. He's been playing quite well lately, covering in three straight, six out of his last 10. Somewhat difficult matchup here against the Bucs. And against the Bucs, he's covered in one out of his last three. He did, however, score 29 points the last time they played. His three-pointers, lines at three and a half. He's covered in four of his last 10. The Bucs allowed the second fewest three-pointers made to small forwards. Uh, PG had six three-pointers the last time he versed the Bucs, and he went under in the last two prior to that. Looking at his assists, the line's at three and a half. He had nine assists against the Bulls today. Does have a pretty decent matchup here against the Bucs, but he's only covered this in three out of his last 10 games and one of his last three games against the Bucs. His rebound props at five and a half. He's covered in four of his last 10. And against the Bucs, he's covered in two out of his last three. So nothing about PG there is getting me even somewhat erect. Kawhi Leonard, his line's at 23 and a half. He's covered that in five out of his last 10. Tough matchup here against the Bucs. Kawhi Leonard struggled against the Bucs, going under in his last two games. Uh, looking at his assist prop, the line's at four and a half. He's covered that in three out of his last 10. Against the Bucs, he's gone over in his last two. So that's pretty good. And his rebound prop is at five and a half. He's covered in six out of his last 10. Tough matchup. Uh, he's covered in one of his last two against the Bucs. So for me, I've got a little tingling in my body to take the under, but the tingle's not enough for me, so I probably won't be betting on Kawhi Leonard at all. This could be one of those games that's good to watch, probably not good to bet on, but let's see how we go. Let's have a look at Zubak. I know he's got a great matchup here against the Bucks. His line's at 10.5. He's covered in four out of his last 10. His minutes, still quite low. Four games under 25 minutes. And in head-to-head matchups, he's only covered in one out of his last three against the Bucks. Looking at his rebound prop, the line's at 9.5. He's covered in five out of his last 10. And he's covered in two out of his last three against the Milwaukee Bucks. Let's head over to the Milwaukee side of things. Let's check Dame Lillard. Now, his points prop, 25 and a half. When I first saw that, I thought, oh, it's a little bit too high. And 
you can see why. So he's only covered this in two out of his last 10 games. But against the Clippers last time, he scored 41 points. The matchup isn't good nor bad. Have been betting on his three-point prop a little bit lately. I think his last two games are better than his three-point prop, and you cash for me both times. But somewhat difficult matchup here. The Clippers don't allow too many three-pointers to point guards. However, Dame just cashed four three-pointers against them in their last matchup. I'm at the start of March, so five days ago. He's covered in five out of his last 10, made four three-pointers against them. In that game, played 41 minutes, four for nine. Took 12 attempts against the Lakers to make his four, but... Yeah, look, at plus money, I honestly could be tempted, but I just I can't see myself taking him for the third consecutive game in a row to cover this. Like he's he's due to fall off at some point. His assist prop is at six and a half. He's covered in six out of his last ten. Tough matchup here against Clippers. Had four assists the last time they played. Rebound wise, you're looking at three and a half. He's covered that in seven out of his last ten. It is minus one fifty, but he had four rebounds the last time he versed the Clippers. So nothing on Dame making me feel it. Malik Beasley, let's check his points in his three-point market. Points-wise, his line's at 11.5. Uh, There's a pretty decent matchup here against the Clippers. He's covered in five out of his last 10 games. Against the Clippers in their last matchup, he only scored five points. Looking at three-pointers, line's at 3.5. He only made one against the Clippers last time and has covered in five out of his last 10. Looking at the Greek freak, he is a game-time decision, but I do expect him to play in this one. A difficult matchup here against the Clippers, but... Giannis has covered this line in five of his last 10, and he's covered it in his last two against the Clippers, scoring 54 and then 35 points in his last two games against them. Important thing to note, Giannis didn't play that last game against the Clippers five days ago, so Dame was running solo. That's why he scored so many points, which could make this this game a little bit tricky to cap. Looking at Giannis' assist prop, lines at six and a half, four out of his last 10. Does have a good matchup. Has gone under in his last two against the Clippers. And his rebound prop. 11.5, 11.5, 5 out of his last 10. Good matchup here against the Clippers, but he's covered in one of his last two against them. So don't bet on Giannis too much. I always feel like his lines are too high, um, but it's not true. He does actually go over his lines quite often. It's just it's hard to pick the games where he does. Let's have a look at Brook Lopez. Now his points props, 10.5. He's covered in six of his last 10. Difficult matchup here against Clippers. Uh, he scored six points in that game five days ago but he has covered in one of his last three. You want to have a look at his three-point prop. The line's at one and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10. Difficult matchup and covered that in one of his last three as well. If you think he's a chance of getting rebounds, that line's at four and a half. He's only covered that in three of his last 10 games, but he has covered it well. Three consecutive games against the Clippers covering this line. So I think if they're going to run Zubak, it makes sense for them to keep Brook Lopez out there. But again... Nothing inside me screaming, screaming out to bet on this. So um, this is the the very first game for the day, and it's quite early. It's at 6 a.m. my time, so I don't know what time that is for you guys out there in the U.S., but it's a very early game. It's not what we're used to. There's nothing that I like in this game. So let's jump into the next one. We're looking at the Washington Wizards versus the Miami Heat. Um, no notable mentions in terms of game time decisions. Tyler Hero, Kevin Love still out. Marvin Bagley still out. For the Wizards, Landry Sham, it's a game time decision, but... Uh, he plays off the bench anyway, so I can't see any impact to the key players' lines. So we'll start off with the Washington Wizards. Where's my man, Tyus Jones? Tyus Jones, where are you hiding, my boy? There he is, all the way at the bottom. So, Tyus Jones. So we just bet he's under an assist the other day. I think they took me under nine and a half. He had a good matchup, but we took me cash. But in this, what I've noticed already, his points prop keeps dropping and dropping. And I think it coincides with his minutes. But his assist prop is still relatively high. So Tyus Jones, his line's at 9.5. He's covered this in four out of his last 10 games. He's got a difficult here, difficult matchup here against Miami. He's got under in his last two games against them. Jumping into his assist prop, that's at 8.5. It is at plus money. So the line's definitely dropped from where it was. Um, but you can see it at 7.5, which means some people are betting the over. And then um, it's back up to eight and a half, moved down to seven and a half. So it's, it is toing and froing. So the public are probably divided on this one, but it's plus money to take the over. He's covered this in six out of his last 10 games, but he has gone under in three straight. Last two games against Miami, he went under as well. In those games, he played 25 minutes. Now, the reason why I'm calling out the 25 minutes is because over his last four games, he's seen a reduction in his minutes. Part of the reason why I took his under for the Charlotte game he is seeing less time 
Kuzma is doing a bit more ball handling. So I personally would lead the under on Tyus Jones assists here, but under 8.5 is minus 145. So uh, you're not getting the greatest odds for it, but it might be something that I choose to parlay. So let me take note of Tyus Jones' unders. Might be something we get to a little bit later. Looking at his rebound prop, that's at 2.5. He's covered this in three consecutive games, but four out of his last 10. He's gone under in his rebound prop, both games against the Miami Heat. Now, we see Jordan Poole lines, which is pretty good. Jordan Poole's been playing great off the bench. So let's check him out. His points prop, 18 and a half. He's covered in six out of his last 10. The matchup's not good nor bad against the Miami Heat. In his last three games against Miami, 19 and 16 points. Looking at his three-pointers made prop, lines at two and a half, minus 19. He's covered in six out of his last 10. Miami do give up quite a bit of... Three pointers made to shooting guards as well. So that could be an option for us. He has covered in one of his last two against them. So yeah, I'm not you'd have to be a brave man to take the bet on Jordan Paul. And brave I am not. His rebound props at three and a half, five out of his last ten. Good matchup against Miami, one of his last two. And his assist prop is at four and a half. He's covered in six out of his last ten. The matchup's not a bad one, but he has covered it in his last two games against the Miami Heat. So Six assists and then two two assists, ten assists earlier this season. So I think this is back in February, perhaps start of March. I'm not too sure, but he absolutely killed it. Oh, yeah, I think that was in February. So Jordan Paul assists overs. It's got my attention. Take a note of that. I'll check that after. If you choose to ride with me, you can check the pin comments at the end. But at the end of the day, I do encourage you to do your own research and find your own picks. Right, Kyle Kuzma. So his points prop here is at 23 and a half. He's covered this in six out of his last 10 games. So he's been playing quite well against Miami, though. He's covered in only two of his last five. If you want to look at his three pointers, he's at lines at two and a half. He's covered in four of his last 10 and two out of his last five against Miami. His assist prop is what I was looking forward to seeing. That line's at three and a half. Last three games, absolutely killing it. He's got a pretty decent matchup, matchup here as well. Head to head. He's covered in two of his last five. So his last two games against Miami Heat, which happened to be this season, he had three assists and one assist. But over the last three games, he's been uh, thrust not into... He's not more of a playmaking role. He's just usage rate is up in general. So at the same time, we see could go up. Tyus Jones has gone down. So I don't know if that might be a correlated pilot that you could play because both lines are quite juiced. You might do Tyus Jones under assist into Kuzma over assist because if Kuzma's racking up the assists, less assists for Tyus Jones to have to do. Kuzma rebounds, lines at seven and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10. He's got a tough matchup here against Miami and he's gone under his rebound prop in four consecutive games. I'd probably lean to the under, but I'm not brave enough to take that. Who else is there for this Washington team? Danny RBI, that's who we usually look at. So, Danny's got a tough matchup here when it comes to scoring points. His line's at 15 and a half. He's covered this in six out of his last 10. When he does miss it, he's not too far off. But in head-to-head -head matches against Miami, he's gone under in five consecutive games. His three-point props at one and a half. He's gone under in all games against Miami, and he's hit in four of his last 10. His assist, the line's at two and a half. He's covered this in seven out of his last 10, and he's covered in four out of his last five against Miami. His rebound props at eight and a half. Every time I see it, I think it's too high, but he tends to have some massive rebounding games. He's got a tough matchup here, and he's covered in two of his last five against the Heat. So yeah, I'd probably lean to the under on Denny Adbia, but not brave enough to take that. Jumping into the Miami Heat, though, let's see what's their starting lineup look like. So Duncan's starting. Caleb Martin's coming off the bench. Let's check out Caleb Martin anyway, because his recent form is pretty good. So... His points line of 11 and a half. He's covered this in four of his last five, five out of his last 10. Has a good matchup here against the Wizards. He has covered in three of his last five, his last two against the Wizards. Not so great. So he's clearly in a reduced role at the moment. So it's not what I'd be looking at. Duncan Robinson, we did hit on him a few days ago. Uh, up against Dallas. We didn't bet on him against OKC and thank God we didn't. So he's got a great matchup to score some points here. Lines at 13 and a half. He's covered in six out of his last 10. Last game against the Wizards, he scored 18 points, five points prior to that. If we look at his three-point market, that's at three and a half. He's covered this in six out of his last 10. 
The matchup isn't good nor bad against Washington, and he hit four three-pointers against them last time. Uh, his minutes are coming down, so they just picked up Patty Mills, extra player in the backcourt from Australia, might I add. But Duncan Robinson, I'm not really feeling his pick in this one. The Heat, I wouldn't say they they do they're not deep, but they do go deeper into their bench. So their second unit actually gets quite a bit of game time. Jaime Harkes Jr. So his points prop here is at 12 and a half. He's got a good matchup. He's covered in three out of his last 10. Now, when he's versus Washington this season, he scored nine and eight points. So going under in both games. If you like his assist, the line's at two and a half, five out of his last 10. Good matchup, one of his last two against them. And then his rebound prop is at four and a half, four out of his last 10, uh, and one of his last two. So, uh, yeah, difficult player to bet on at the moment. The lines seem pretty sharp on him. Bam at a bio. His points prop here is 21 and a half, and he's got a great matchup against Washington. He's covered this, though, in only five of his last 10. Points prop really trending down for Bam. And in head-to-head matchups, he's covered in one of his last four. So I know he has a great matchup, but Bam, not so aggressive trying to score the ball. Shot very poorly against OKC. Shot poorly against Dallas as well. He's only getting, he's actually just getting worse. But I don't know if he's going to be required to be so aggressive. Or could this be the game that plays him into form, right? So Bam Adebayo has got a great matchup. The line in this game is 10.5, so you could see a Miami blowout, really. So I'd be a bit hesitant to take the points prop. But his assist prop, 3.5, 5 out of his last 10. Great matchup, of course, but he's gone under in all four games against Washington. And his rebounding props at 10.5, he's gone under in eight consecutive games. He's got the best matchup in basketball, though, which is why we don't see a reduced line despite this performance. And in head-to-head matchups, he has covered in three out of his last four. So, yeah, if I had to pick it, it'd be the over. But at minus 135, I don't think that's worth playing. But one thing I might consider playing here is an under in his points plus assists. He does have a good matchup in this, but he has gone under in three straight. As I mentioned, Miami do somewhat go a little bit deep into their bench. Thomas Thomas Bryant, I noticed, is getting more game time, which Van doesn't need to. So he only played 30 minutes against OKC, and that wasn't even a blowout. He wasn't in foul trouble, so just reduced minutes in general because he wasn't playing great. Um, in this game, are they going to need him to? In head-to-head matchups against Washington, he's gone under his points plus assist line in three out of those four games. And in these games, it went bad. He scored 20 points, but got one assist. 18 points, had three assists. In this game, he scored 38 points, but that was back in 2022. So... I don't know if Bam is Bam going to be required to shoot the ball 20 times or 22 times and score 30 plus points. I highly doubt it. And if you take the under 24 and a half, you're getting minus 102 odds. So, yeah, if you look at his last 10, it's probably not the wisest bet. But if you make up stories in your mind the way that I do, you can somehow talk yourself into looking at it. So um, I'll take note of that. Bam, under points and assists. All right, let's get into Jimmy. So Jimmy's been really good to bet on lately, especially since since the All-Star break. Jimmy Butler and DeMar DeRozan have been absolute beasts. Prior to the All-Star break, I wouldn't go close to either of them, but they've both been getting it done for us. Let's take a look at this. Jimmy's points props at 22.5. He's covered this in four out of his last 10 games. Against Washington, he's won from two this season. Three-point prop, 0.5. I'm not screwing with that. His assist prop, 6.5. Covering in six out of his last 10. Does have a good matchup, but six and a half, pretty steep. We were able to get Jimmy Butler's assist prop at like four and a half, five and a half max, but six and a half, you've got me hesitating, which tells me that the line's just about right. Last two games against Washington, he's gone with under both times. Two and three assists. Look at his rebound prop. That's at six and a half. He's covered in five of his last 10. Great matchup, and he's rebounded very well against Washington in the past. But... Yeah, I don't know. Look, do we go similar to Bam? He's got a great matchup for points and assists, but he's only hit in four of his last 10, and he has gone under in his last two games against Washington. I just question, are they going to need them, need a big game out of Jimmy? But, like, Jimmy normally puts it on in the second half, right? What if Miami are up 15, 20 points by the third quarter? Does Jimmy really need to do what he does? Just saying. I'm not going to bet that. I think... I feel more comfortable with the Bam at a bio one just because I know he doesn't have that gear in him to get aggressive. But the same could be said about Jimmy because he might not be needed to score late in that game. Let's look at Terry Rozier. 
His points prop, 17 and a half. Good matchup against Washington. He's covered in four out of his last 10. Last game against Washington, he was playing with Miami. Only scored 15 points, which isn't too bad, but it's not what you're looking for, right? Um, looking at his three-point prop, one and a half minus 155. Has hit in three straight. The matchup's not that bad. Um, didn't make a three-pointer in their last game. This wise you're looking at five and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10. Had five assists against Washington. And his rebound prop, five out of his last 10. He's covered, and he did have eight rebounds in that game against the Wizards. So, yeah, that's not too bad. But, again, I'm not feeling that either. So, look, I think from this game, I really think we could come up with the same game parlay here for Tyus Jones under assist, Kuzma over assist, and I'll have a look at Jordan Poole's assists as overs and Bam under points and assists. So I'll check those out. But let's jump into the next one. My Lord, there's quite a few games on. So we have the Indiana Pacers versus the Orlando Magic. Jalen Suggs is a game-time decision as well as Markel Fultz. So the backcourt for Orlando can get a little bit depleted here. So. Let's check it out. Gary Harris, I wouldn't normally look at his, but given the extra opportunities you might see if Suggs and Fultz aren't willing to go, then this could be a good play for us. So Gary Harris has a good matchup here against the Pacers. His line's at 7.5, and, and he's covered in six out of his last seven games. In head-to-head -head matchups against the Pacers, he's covered in four out of his last five. So now you got my attention. I'm writing Gary, at Gary Harris. So I'll check him out after this game. But his points prop, that doesn't look too bad. Looking at his three-point prop, line's at one and a half. He's covered this in seven out of his last eight games to hit two three-pointers. The Indiana Pacers, though, they only allow the, they allow the third fewest three-pointers made to shooting guards. Gary Harris has still covered this in four out of his last five against Indiana, attempting on average 5.2 three-pointers per game. In his last 10, he's averaging 3.4 attempts. So Indiana tends to run everybody off the line and forces them to drive. Gary Harris, a lot of catch and shoot threes from the corner. His assist prop, I wouldn't be interested in, and neither would his rebound prop. But I do think his points prop, I think that one's a good one to research a little bit further. Paolo Banquero, his points prop, 24 and a half here against the Pacers. Great matchup. He's covered this line in four of his last 10 games. And against the Pacers, he did score 34 the last time they played, but he did go under in the three games prior. I called out his three-point prop as a good bet in the last the last time they played. It was one and a half. It was plus money. I ended up picking Franz, and then Banquero hits two three-pointers against the Knicks. Has a great game. So I made the wrong decision last time. But the Pacers allow the fewest three-pointers made to power forwards on the season. He's hit this in five of his last ten and only one of his last four against the Pacers. So I wouldn't be looking at the same prop here in this game. His assist, though, could get interesting. Lines at five and a half. He's covered in four out of his last ten, but he's gone under in four consecutive games against the Pacers, and the matchup is somewhat difficult. His rebound prop, that line's at seven and a half. He does have a good matchup, three of his last ten, but he's gone under in four straight games against the Indiana Pacers. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm a little bit hesitant, just saying. All right. Wendell Carter Jr. So I think I bet on him to go overs in the first quarter in his last game, and he and he hit that for us. So that was pretty good. But let's have a look. Lines at eleven and a half. He's covered in five of his last ten. Tough matchup here against Miles Turner. He's gone under in his last two against the Pacers as well. So his points prop today, I probably would have been too interested in taking it. But maybe his rebound prop. That's at seven and a half. Difficult matchup, but he has covered in three straight. Five out of his last seven games, and he has covered in three consecutive games against the Indiana Pacers. So that's not bad. Odds are at 119, though. So I like to see things a little bit more juicier than that. Uh, Franz Wagner. Let's check out Franz. Massive letdown. Better on him to go over against the Knicks. Finishes on 13 points. Misses his first five layups. What a guy. Now, his points prop, 21 and a half. He's covered this in one of his last 10 games. He does have a good matchup here against the Pacers, though. And in his last six games against the Pacers, he's covered this twice. Scored 24 points the last time these guys met. So it could be a bounce-back game for France, but I shall not be betting on this German. Not just yet. So his assist prop, three and a half. Five of his last ten he's covered in. Hasn't even gotten close in his last four games, though. Against the Pacers, he's covered in one out of his last six. 
So the over three and a half is at minus 130, which means under is plus money, plus 106. So that's quite interesting. The Orlando offense is really just, has it halted or is it Bancaro doing more work? They're going to be lacking some point guards in this game, potentially. So France could probably pick up some more playmaking, but or maybe I'm just looking for a reason to bet the under, but it could be a good play. His rebound prop here is at five and a half. He's covered in two of his last 10. He does have a good matchup though, and he's rebounded okay against the pen in the past. Three consecutive games now, four out of his last six games. So yeah, I shan't be betting France, but his rebound prop is not the worst one in the world. Now, jumping into these paces, we'll start off with Spicy P, Pascal Siakam. Bet on his rebound prop not too long ago against the Minnesota Timberwolves, and he broke my heart. Almost had the perfect day. Cost me a couple thousand dollars. Well, that's not true. He didn't cost me a couple thousand. I made the wrong choice. He underperformed and lost a couple thousand dollars. Thank you, Pascal. Points prop, 19 and a half. He's covered in six out of his last 10 games. Yet to verse the Orlando Magic, though. Since joining the Pacers, looking at his assist prop, three and a half, five out of his last 10. He does have a difficult matchup here, keeping in mind for every single prop. Rebound wise, lines at six and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10. So, yeah, Pascal's very up and down. I won't be betting on him, that's for sure. Uh, who else have we got? Miles Turner. His points prop is at 14 and a half. Difficult matchup. He's covered in 13 of 20 games. Six of his last 10. And against the Orlando Magic, he's covered this in four out of his last six. Most recently scoring 24 points against them. So pretty strong turnout there from Turner. His rebound prop is at six and a half. Been rebounding quite well. Seven out of his last 10. Does have a difficult matchup here, but he's covered this in four out of his last six games as well against the Orlando Magic. So points and rebounds. Um, they both follow the same trend here for Miles Turner in terms of when he plays up against this opposition. As you can see, the games he didn't score much, he didn't rebound much either. So in the others, massive effort. Line at 21 and a half. We've got 31, 35, 32, and 31. Um, in the two games he went under, he played 22 and 26 minutes. Checking out his last five games, he's playing 24.8 minutes on average. This game against Minnesota, it was a close game, so it wasn't a blowout, so no reason for him to sit unless he sucked. And this game against the Pelicans was a blowout, so fair enough that he played less minutes. Now the line in this game, Orlando are the favorites, but it's only one and a half, so I can't see this being a blowout. So Miles Turner should get more reps, should get more run. So he's covered his points plus rebounds prop in eight of his last 10 games. So I'll check out Miles Turner after this video. Points and rebounds. Got my attention, Miles. Tyrese Halliburton. Points prop is 19 and a half. Difficult matchup here against the Magic. In his last 10, he's covered this three times. Against the Orlando Magic, he's covered this two out of his last five, scoring 29 points most recently against them. His three-point props at two and a half. He's covered this in five of his last 10. Does have a difficult matchup against Orlando and is covered in two of his last five. Assist, the line's at 10 and a half. So it's quite low. 10 and a half and plus money for Tyrese Halliburton. So that's pretty crazy. Now, he does have a difficult matchup, but this is Tyrese Halliburton we're talking about. Six of his last 10, and he's got, covered this in four out of his last five games against Orlando. 14, 14, 14. He had three in this game, played 25 minutes in that game too. So it wasn't foul trouble. So I don't know. He may have been injured or he was on a minutes restriction, but then 15 assists. After that, so Tyrese Halliburton assists at plus money. That might be something I can get get around. This is dangerous. My list of leans is very long, and we're in the, we're not even halfway through the games. <laughs> Halliburton assists. I don't mind that. I'll check that out a bit more. And then outside of that, Naismith he'll do nothing in this game. So we've got a long list of leans, and we're only three games in. Let's go. We're looking at the Houston Rockets versus Sacramento Kings. In this game, no notable game time decisions or injuries. So everyone looks pretty good to go. So I've got a lot of players to preview. Let's do this. We'll start with the Houston Rockets, though. We'll have a look at Jalen Green. Lines at 19 and a half for his points prop. Has a good matchup here against the Kings. His last five games have been pretty decent. He's covered in four out of his last five. So some, there's there's a fire burning inside of him, and I don't know what it is. But 
In head-to-head matchups, he's covered this points prop in five out of his last six against the Sacramento Kings. So whatever's going on, keep doing it. So Jalen Graney's points prop, that seems like a decent play. Three-point market, that's pretty inconsistent. So he does have a good matchup here, and he has covered his three-point line in five out of his last six. I don't do pushes, so let's go over two and a half. And he's done that in four of his last ten, three of his last five, and five out of his last six against the Kings. So uh, I think I like his points prop more than his, re- his three-point line at the moment, but I'll have to dive a little bit further to find out. Here's his assist line, three and a half, four of his last ten. Somewhat difficult matchup on under quite often against the Kings. And his rebound, four and a half. Four of his last 10 and only one of his last six against the Kings. So a couple of things I like. I like his points prop, yes. But I don't like his rebound and assist prop. So we could look at the under here. So he's got a difficult matchup for rebounds. The assist matchup isn't a great one for him. So he's gone under in... Hang on, just let me flip this around. Under eight and a half, he's gone under in seven of his last 10. He's also got un- gone under in six consecutive games against the Sacramento Kings. Interesting. So let me write this. Jalen Green. Over in points. Under in everything else. All right. So I've typed in under in the ass plus rebounds. You guys know what I'm talking about. Well, I know what I'm talking about. I'm the other person who's going to see these notes. Fred Van Vliet. Let's check out Freddie. Points prompt here is 15 and a half. The matchup isn't too bad against the Kings. He's covered in six out of his last 10, four out of his last five, one of his last two against Kings. Three-point prop, two and a half. He's covered that in four consecutive games now. The matchup isn't the greatest, but six of his last 10. And he did cover this in his last two games against the Kings. So I don't mind that. What's Fred doing? Is he shooting more? Slightly more, but he's shooting a pretty good percentage. 55, 56, 44, and 50. So you actually can afford one more. The line's at two and a half. Yeah, it's not bad. God damn, my list is huge. Fred Van Vliet, three pointers. I'll look into that. His assist prop, six and a half. Got a good matchup here against the Kings. His last four games have been excellent. 11, 10, 8, and then 10. And in head-to-head matchups, he's covered in one of his last two. The game where he went under with only five assists, Play 27 minutes because the Houston Rockets blew out the Sacramento Kings. So I think his assists are worth looking into as well. Hopefully his rebounds aren't worth looking into. Five out of his last 10. Good matchup. Four out of his last five. And he did rebound well last time. My God. So assist plus rebounds. My look at his assist plus rebound prop. All right. That's Fred. Jabari Smith Jr. Let's have a look. Lines at 13 and a half. He's covered this in three of his last five, six out of his last 10. Does have a good matchup here against the Kings, uh, and he's covered in two out of his last six against them. Looking at his rebounds, lines at nine and a half. It's gone under and four straight after this massive rebounding stretch. The matchup isn't the best, and he's gone under in five out of his last six games. So, yeah, for his rebound prop, I'd probably lean the under, but you would get the best odds for that anyway. Who else have we got? Goonie. Alper and Shangun. So his points prop, 21 and a half. Difficult matchup here against Sabonis. He's covered in three of his last 10. And against Sabonis, he's gone under in six consecutive games. The master meets the apprentice. That's quite interesting. Looking at his assist prop, his line's at four and a half. It's plus money. Does have a good matchup here. Check this out. Check this shit out right now. He's gone over his assist prop in six consecutive games against the Sacramento Kings. Woo! And you can get it for plus money. I like trends like that. Shangun. Checking out his rebound prop. Lines at 10 and a half. He's covered this in five out of his last 10. Does have a pretty good matchup here, but against Abana Sabonis, he's gone under this 10 and a half line in six consecutive games. He does get pretty close to it, though. Don't get me wrong. It's not too bad, but the trends in his assist prop and he smashes his assists and he doesn't struggle scoring, but He hasn't got that done. So very interesting stuff right there. What else have we got? Oh, yeah, we've got the Kings players. My Lord. Let's check out De'Aaron Fox. Foxy. So his points prop here is 26 and a half. Somewhat difficult matchup here against the Houston Rockets. 
He has covered in four out of his last five games, seven out of his last ten. Well, seven out of his last eight games, really, he's covered this points prop. But against the Rockets, he's covered in one of his last four. Did score 31 points the last time these teams met. If you like his three-pointers, take the two and a half, get some plus money. He's only covered in one of his last ten, so that's not good. Um, Assist-wise, you're looking at five and a half assists. The Rockets allow the fewest assists to point guards in the, on this season. Fox has covered in seven of his last 10 games. And against the Rockets, he's covered in three out of his last four. So five and a half is where his line normally sits, but you don't normally get it at plus money. I think we're seeing plus money here, probably because the matchup is supposed to be difficult. So logically, I would bet the over on this, right? But... I'm still a bit butt hurt from this because I had his over five and a half assists. It was my last leg of a parlay against the Lakers. Even though that game went to OT or whatever was happening, this guy wouldn't stop shooting the ball. So part of the reason why he probably can't get the assist is because he doesn't pass. So well, he does pass just late in the game. He doesn't. So I'm a bit butt hurt by that. But if he gets six assists or more, I'll change my mind on him. Fox rebound, six out of his last 10. He's covered the four and a half. He's got a tough matchup here, and he's covered this in two out of his last four against the Rockets. So nothing amazing out of that one. Uh, Malik Monk coming off the bench. Now, this guy can get some assists. I can see this guy passing the ball a lot. 16 and a half is a line. He's covered in five out of his last 10. If you want to talk about his matchup, it's a little bit difficult. Head-to-head wise, he's covered in three of his last six against the Rockets. His assist prop, though, he's covered in three straight. And it's on the stairway to heaven. It's only moving up. Five out of his last 10, but he's only covered in one of his last six against the Rockets. His rebounds are at three and a half. That's skyrocketing too. Check that out. Five consecutive games now. He's covered his rebound prop, and he does have an excellent matchup for rebounds. But in head-to-head matchups, he's only covered in one of his last six. In those games, he averages 21 minutes per game. In his last five, he's playing 30 minutes a night. So, yeah, recent form is great. Head-to-head form is not. So I'm a little bit jaded, a little bit conflicted. I don't know which one to take, so I'm not going to take any. But let's have a look at Demanus Sabonis. His points prop here is 20 and a half. He's covered in four out of his last 10. The matchup isn't too bad against the Rockets. In head-to-head matchups, he's only covered in two out of his last six. Looking at his assist, the line's at eight and a half. He's covered this in six of his last 10. Difficult matchup. And he's gone under in three consecutive games against the Rockets. But prior to that, was absolutely killing him. His rebound prop is at 14 and a half. Of course it is. He's covered in six of his last 10, four straight, 15, 21, 20, and 17 rebounds. My Lord. And he's covered this in two out of his last six against the Rockets. So, yeah, these lines with this form, a little bit too high for me. Um, Keegan Murray, just want to check his points prop out. Sacramento playing at home. So this guy's capable of doing some wild shit at home. Does have a good matchup but has only covered in four of his last 10. And against the Rockets, he's only covered in two of his last six. So, yep, wasted my time there. So quite a few players, Jalen Green, Fred Van Vliet, and Alfred Shingoon. I think De'Aaron Fox, honestly, is probably worth, if you guys are going to do your own research, look into De'Aaron Fox. I just can't find it within me to bet him, but I do think a lot of the data stacks up. There's some good signs there is what I'll say. Jumping in the next one's the New Orleans Pelicans versus the Atlanta Hawks. All right, so in terms of the matchups and lineups, we have DeJounte Murray's a game-time decision in this one, but he's expected to play. Still, Trey Young, Okongwu, Jalen Johnson, all still out for the Atlanta Hawks. So the Pelicans are seven and a half point favorites in this one, so we'll start with them. We'll start with CJ McCollum first. So he's got a great matchup to score some points here. His line's at 16 and a half. It's plus money, but he's gone under in three straight, covering in four of his last 10. He's covered in two or three against the Atlanta Hawks in the past. His three-point prop is at two and a half. He's covered that in seven of his last 10 games. Has an excellent matchup here, and is covered in two of his last three against Atlanta. His assist prop, three and a half. He's covered in four of his last 10, two of his last three against the Hawks. And his rebound prop is at four and a half. Great matchup. Three out of his last 10, though. Two out of his last three against the Hawks. His last game he played against the Hawks, he sucked. He didn't do anything. But the matchup is great, but his form's a little bit of, uh, a little bit all over the moment. Um, let's take a look at Herb Jones. Now, I'll only look at his points prop because this guy can get sneaky with it. And I've taken his points prop at 12.5 a, a couple of times and cashed around this period here. 
We're now seeing it nine and a half. So Herb Jones, his matchup isn't too bad. He's covered in seven of his last 10. And he's covered in three consecutive games against the Hawks. In those games, he played 35 minutes. In his last 10, he's playing 33 minutes a night. Um, the Pels have had a couple of blowout wins, though. So that could be a risk. The nine and a half. Look, I honestly don't mind that. The problem is the Pelicans can have Zion, Brandon Ingram, CJ McCollum, and uh, Trey Murphy. They can all go off. And if they go off, this guy's not going to get his shots. So if you look at his shot attempts, uh, his last five games, he's averaging 6.6, but there are games with only four shot attempts, right? They're the games he goes under. And I guarantee you in those games, somebody would have exploded. I think in this Philly game, Zion was going hard. And in this game against Indiana, Brandon Ingram was going mental. So uh, I don't mind it. Look, let's just say I'm not going to touch it. Minus 119, we're not doing it. Herb Jones, I'm not taking the risk on you, my boy. Trey Murphy, he's coming off the bench, but he'll get close to starters minutes. His points prop, 13 and a half. As you can see, capable of some big games. Minus 119, three of his last 10 games and one of his last two against the Atlanta Hawks. Can get hot from deep. Check that out. Five out of his last 10, but when he goes, he goes. So he does have a good matchup here against the Hawks. Has hit pointers against him in the last the last time he faced them. Uh, but I can't predict a bench player going off. Points prop here is 20 and a half. Got a good matchup here. The Hawks don't play very, defense very well at all. Five out of his last 10 has gone under his last two. Covered in one of his last three against Atlanta. His assist props at five and a half. He's covered in seven out of his last 10. And in head-to-head -head matches, two of his last three against the Hawks. And his rebounds, five and a half. Five out of his last 10. And one of three against the Hawks. So there's nothing about Ingram getting me excited. Zion. All right, 22 and a half. Five out of his last 10. Great matchup against the Hawks. Has covered in two consecutive games against them. Looking at his assists, lines at five and a half, six of his last ten went under in his both games against them. And rebound six and a half, four of his last ten, one of his last two against the Hawks. So great matchup for all Zion props, to be honest. But what worries me in this game is really the blowout. Jonas Valanciunas, I want to look at his rebound prop because uh, his points prop is going to be a bit all over the place. But I'll have a flick through whilst I'm talking and you can see what I'm looking at. But yeah, I did see uh, a couple cappers get up nice and early and, and put out bets for Jonas over eight and a half. Uh, line open at nine and a half, quickly moved to eight and a half. But yeah, a lot of people are betting the, not a lot of people, I saw a few cappers betting the over his rebounds. And I'm just trying to understand why. So he's covered in seven of his last eight games. He's gone over his rebound count, which is good. Two of his last three against Atlanta. The matchup isn't difficult, but it's not the best either. Look, he's managed to get a lot of rebounds in only 20 minutes. So, yeah, look, I don't hate this play, but at those odds, eight and a half, I'm not willing to take it. But, yeah, I just wanted to check that out. Looking at these Atlanta Hawks, we'll start with DeJounte Murray. He's a game-time decision. Just had a big game, actually, 41 points. His line's at 23 and a half. He's covered in four of his last 10, but he does have a difficult matchup. He's gone under in three consecutive games against the New Orleans Pelicans. His assists, seven and a half, five of his last 10, one of his last three against the Pels. And his rebound props at five and a half, seven of his last 10, and two of his last three against the Pelicans. That's not too bad, but I wonder what the injury is that he has. Left calf bruise. Surely he'll be fine. Who else have we got? Sadiq Bay. Check out his points and rebounds. 15 and a half is his points prop. He's covered that in five of his last 10 games. Difficult matchup, and he went under the last time they played. His rebound prop is at six and a half. He's covered in three straight. Pretty good. Um, I did predict some big rebounding from Sadiq Bay with Jalen Johnson out of the lineup. Wasn't man enough to take the bet, but I thought that would happen, um, and it has happened over his last three games. Head-to-head -head matchups, he only had five rebounds when they last played. He played 26 minutes. These days, he's seeing 35 to 40 minutes a night. So Sadiq Bay, six and a half rebounds at plus money. He had five rebounds in 26 minutes. If he plays an extra 10 minutes, it will definitely get one. So, yeah, I think the line's about right, but the odds are pretty good there for Sadiq Bay to get some boards. Points props, 11 and a half. Has a good matchup here against the Pelicans. Well, it's not good, but it's not difficult. And in his last 10, he's covered this three times, but he has covered it in three consecutive games against the Pels. And his rebound props also nine and a half, five of his last 10, one of his last three against them. So, yeah, I'm not feeling Clint Capella. 
Bogdanovich. Let's check him out. So he's got a – out of all the matchups you can get when you're playing the Pelicans, the shooting guards and the centers probably have the easiest ones. And Bogdanovich, four out of his last ten, he's covered 16 and a half points. One of his last two against the Pels. We're going to look at his three-point markets, two and a half. He's covered in seven out of his last ten. Has an excellent matchup here. Now the Pelicans allow the fourth most three-pointers made to shooting guards, and he's covered this in two out of his last five. The game he hit five, he played 30 minutes of the game. He scored two, he played only 20 minutes. Now that Trey Young's out of the lineup, what are we seeing? Bogdanovich is playing at least 33 minutes a night. He's taking 6.6 attempts. So uh, two and a half at minus 145, I'm not too keen on. If the odds are a little bit better, it's something I'd probably take. But yeah, Bogdanovich, not a bad play. So yeah, in this particular game... Probably Herb Jones has my interest and Sadiq Bay to get some boards. Probably those two. The others, not so much. All right, we're jumping into the Philadelphia 76ers versus the New York Knicks. And so in this one, there's no game time decision. So fuck, we've got more players to go through. This is going to be a long ass video. Let me just check the clock real quick. All right, I'm 52 minutes in based on my recording before edits. So it won't be 52 minutes for you, but. We're getting close to an hour, and I've got four more games to go. Let's go. We're working hard for the money, baby. All right. Let's kick it off with these New York Knicks first. Start with Jalen Brunson. So he just came back from injury, played quite well. Only scored 26, but dominant. They beat the Orlando Magic by 24 points. Up against Philadelphia 76ers, does have a difficult matchup. He's hitting four of his last 10. He's only hitting two of his last six against them. If you want to look at his three-point market, it's two and a half. He's covered in five out of his last 10, but only one of six against Philly. His assist prop, six and a half, five out of his last 10 games. Does have a good matchup, and he's covered in five out of his last six against the 76ers. So, yeah, I don't mind his assist prop. I don't know what's happened in the last three games, but for the most part, I don't mind that. Looking at his rebound prop, the line's at three and a half. Ooh, two of his last 10 and three of his last six against them. So I don't like that. Josh Hart. So I, I already have a bet on Josh Hart, and I'll share it with you. I just wasn't sure. Well, I did a lot of research into this, actually, just because I thought he had a good matchup and good form. So firstly, we'll look at his points prop. 12 and a half the line. He's covered this in nine, nine out of his last 10. Eight consecutive games he's gone over. Matchup with Philly, somewhat difficult, but... Head-to-head -head matchups, he did score 18 points when they last met, 10 points prior to that. So, yeah, that was, yeah, actually, the start of his new trend. He scored 18 there, and he's just kept it going. So I do like his points prop. Then I looked at his other props, but let's just quickly check his three-point market. He's hit his three-point line of one and a half in eight out of his last 10. Had two three-pointers against Philly. Then I looked at his assist prop. I was like, oh, line's at four and a half. What have we got? Seven out of his last 10. The matchup's supposed to be difficult. Went under the last time he versed him. So one from two. So the assist prop, I was like, oh, I was a little bit hesitant. Then I looked at his rebound prop. He's covered this in five out of his last 10 games. If When he's gone under, it's by one or two rebounds. And against Philly, 15 and then 12 rebounds, and the matchup is great. So... Um, what I ended up taking was his points plus his rebounds, I believe. I took the, left the assists out of it. If you look at his points and rebounds, nine out of his last 10. He's got the great matchup for rebounds. He's hitting his points consistently, and he's capable of breakout games in either prop. So I thought this was the smartest way to play it. Instead of just pigeoning myself into one prop, I like the combination here of points plus rebounds for Josh Hart. Precious to Chua. Let's see what he's been up to. Points-wise, he's covered in six out of his last 10. Matchup's not too difficult. Has hit in three consecutive games. Scored 18 points when he last first Philly. His rebound props at eight and a half. At first, I was like, shit, that's high. But he's been doing all right. Six out of his last 10. Had 11 rebounds against Philly last time. Dante DiVincenzo, his points props at 17 and a half. He's covered this in five out of his last 10. The matchup's not too bad. And in head-to-head -head matchups, he's gone under both games against Philly. Three-point market, his line's at three and a half. He's hit this in seven of his last 10 games. He's also hit this in both games against the 76ers. So he's going to put them up. He's averaging 12 three-point attempts per game in his last 10. 
Dante DiVincenzo getting after it. Who else is there for this Knicks team? Isaiah Hartenstein, I don't think his props are worth looking at. He's not seeing the minutes that he used to, um, so his props are a little bit whack. Let's jump into the 76ers. So Tobias Harris, we cashed his first quarter under. Letting you know I'm probably going to take it again, but let's look at his other props. 19.5 to the line. He's covered in three of his last 10. Does have a pretty good matchup here against the Knicks, but against the Knicks, he's gone under in five consecutive games. If you like his assist prop, it's a three and a half. He's covered in three of his last 10. The matchup's not bad, and he's covered in three of six against them. Rebound-wise, six and a half, six out of his last 10, and two of his last six against the New York Knicks. No Tyrese Maxey, so Kyle Lowry's going to get a lot of opportunities here. So let's see what we can find with him. I'm only going to look at his last five because he's a recent addition to the team. But he's covered this points line in two of his last five. Scored 11 points against the Knicks last time. Looking at his three-point prop, that's at one and a half. He's covered this in two of his last five. Only made one against the Knicks last time. His assist prop is at five and a half. He's covered in three of his last five. Had five assists against the Knicks. And his rebound prop is two and a half. He's covered in three out of his last five. Had four rebounds against the Knicks last time. All right, Buddy Yield. I'm actually, I saw the line at 14 and a half. I understand Tyrese Maxey isn't there, but I automatically thought to lean to the under. And here's why. He's covered this 14 and a half point sign in two out of his last 10. Um, I feel like with no Tyrese Maxey, it probably increases his potential for playmaking. Um, not capable of beating his man off the dribble. He has to be a recipient of somebody else. So, yeah, two out of his last 10, he's hit the line. And the last time he versed the Knicks, he scored 14 points. So, leaning the under for sure. His assist prop, three and a half. He's had to hit that in seven out of his last 10. And he had six assists last time against the Knicks. So, yeah, I'd probably lean to taking that assist prop. But now that Kyle Lowry's there, campaign's there, Buddy healed. I'm a little bit uncertain. His rebound props at two and a half. He's covered this in seven out of his last 10 games. And against the Knicks, sorry, I'm looking at three-point props. My bad. Three-point props at two and a half, seven out of his last 10 games. Has a good matchup to shoot some threes here. Um, and he made four last time against the New York Knicks. So, yeah, Buddy Hill's definitely something to look into. He's got some pretty consistent form. You just got to find out which one of those is going to be the outlier, which one's going to help us make some money. But that's all I've got for this game. Let's jump into the Brooklyn Nets versus the Cleveland Cavaliers. So Cam Thomas came back in in his last game. I think he's got 31 points. So for Cleveland, uh, Donovan Mitchell, Evan Mobley, all still out of this game. I'm actually going to sit down because I'm getting quite uncomfortable. Bear with me for one moment. Right, we're back. Now, there's only five props available in this game. I think Akora is a game time decision, but there's probably others. We're just not sure, right? So... Let's take a look. We'll start with these Brooklyn Nets. Nick Claxton, points prop is 13 and a half. He's played well in his last four games. Look at that. Four consecutive games covering this line. It's money if you take the 13 and a half. Uh, head-to-head matchups, though, he's gone under in six consecutive games against the Cleveland Cavaliers. If you look at his rebound prop, that is at nine and a half. He's covered that in three consecutive games, five out of his last ten. And against the Cavs, he's gone over in one of his last six. So I don't like the sounds of that. Dennis Schroeder, his assist prop's been going quite well. Um, I almost took that today, but I bitched it. But he's covered his points prop here in four of his last 10. Um, he's been in Brooklyn this whole time. Yep. Four of his last 10 games. The matchup isn't too difficult against Cleveland, but he's yet to verse them as a Brooklyn net. Looking at his three-point prop, one and a half. Minus 170, though. He has hit that in seven out of his last 10, but the odds aren't great. His assist prop, he's been doing quite well here. Check this out. Six consecutive games now, he's covered this six and a half. He does have a difficult matchup against Cleveland, though, so I'd be a little bit hesitant. But if you like recent form, then you're going to like this bet. Who else is there? Mikael Bridges. As you know, I never bet on this guy, and I'm not starting today. But his points prop, 19 and a half. He's covered in two out of his last 10 but he has played well against Cleveland in the past, covering in four out of his last five. If you like three-pointers, the line of two and a half, he's covered in five of his last 10, but only one of five against Cleveland. His assists, three and a half, six out of his last 10, and two of his last five against Cleveland. Rebound-wise, four and a half, five out of his last 10, three of his last five against the Cavs. So we've only got lines for Garland and Jared Allen at the moment, but let's check it out. So I was brave enough to take the under on Darius Garland in the last game, and then look what happened. 34 points, my lord. 
Now, this game against the Nets, they actually allow a lot of points to point guards. He has, however, covered 23 and a half points twice in his last 10, and he's gone under against the Nets in four consecutive games. Prior to that, he had a 46 point out, outing. So, it's going to be a difficult, difficult court one. Looking at his assists, the line's at seven and a half. He's covered in four of his last 10. Different matchup against the Nets, but he's covered in two of his last five. And if you want to look at his three point market, Three and a half. He's gone under in three straight. He's hit in three of his last 10. Does have a good matchup, but he's gone under in four straight against Brooklyn. So there's a lot of contradicting data there for Darius Garland. Jared Allen, 18 and a half. So his line continues to grow. 18 and a half at minus 170. That's mental. So surely that should be, surely that should be 19 and a half. You're going to get 20 and a half, actually. Yeah, it should be 12. What's going on? His line is super high. He's got a difficult matchup here. He scored 33 points against the Timberwolves, and Rudy Gobert is a difficult matchup too. So fair enough. And look, check this out. Against the Nets in the past, he hasn't scored more than 14 points against them. Uh, get that the Cavs are depleted. In these games, what's he doing here? He's taken on an average 7.2 shots. In his last five games, what's he doing? He's playing 37 minutes. He's taken 13.2 shots. But... 13 shots to get 20 a point, 20 points. I guess he is making six free throws. My God, he shot 21 free throw attempts against the Cleveland Cavaliers. This man built different. So, yeah, I can't get a good read on Jared Allen, but if he's going to get to the line that much, that line should be a lot higher. His rebounds, he's covered his 13 and a half in three of his last 10. And against the Brooklyn Nets, he's covered in one out of his last five. 13 and a half rebound line is very high. 20 point line is very high. So they're expecting a 20 point, 14 rebound night out of Jared Allen. And honestly, given that Cleveland has almost everybody out and the minutes he's going to play, he can probably get it, to be honest. So um, I'm not man enough to take that bet, but hey, I wouldn't be blown away if it happens. Second last game, we've got the Memphis Grizzlies versus the Oklahoma City Thunder. Memphis Grizzlies, obviously, they've got a injury list longer than my last name. I was going to say something inappropriate there, but then I'd be lying. Luke Kennard, Gigi Jackson are game time decisions in this game. So only market available is for Jaron Jackson Jr. So we'll start with him. And lines at 26 and a half. He's covered in six out of his last 10. Doesn't have a bad matchup here against OKC, but he's struggled. He's gone under in four consecutive games against them. His rebound market is not worth looking at because he's inconsistent as hell. For some reason, in his last three, he's been a rebounding beast. Prior to that, he sucked. So he's only covered six and a half rebound in 20% of his last 20 games. Check that out. Four of his last 20 games, he's covered six and a half rebounds. Three of them happen to be his last three games. Against OKC, he's covered in two out of his last four. All right, let's jump into OKC. Let's look at SGA. So SGA, he's got a good matchup for scoring points here. He's covered this 30 and a half line in eight out of his last 10. The line for this game is 15 points. So keep that in mind. SGA has got a good matchup. He's been scoring quite well, but OKC should be able to blow these guys off the park, especially there at home. And against Memphis in the past, he's gone under in three consecutive games. Speaking of blowouts, though, check that out. Last two games, or well, the last game is the main one that matters because it was this season. OKC won by 19 points. SGA falls under. The game prior to that, Memphis blew them out by 20. So I think the 30 points are the main one there. Look, it's half a point. I wouldn't make a decision based off that. But look, his form's been great. His assist prop, five and a half. He's covered in five of his last 10. Does have a good matchup. And he's covered in two of his last three against Memphis. And his rebound prop, we're looking at five of his last 10 and two out of his last three against the Grizz. So... Yeah, he's got a great match of the SGA. I'm just not feeling it. Josh Giddy, this might be something that I could screw around with. When they have easier matchups, Josh Giddy tends to get a bit more scoring opportunities. I may have just made that up to prove uh, to talk myself into betting it, but let's talk about it. Josh Giddy's lines at nine and a half. He's covered this in eight of his last 10 games, four games in a row against the Grizzlies, 26, uh, 20, 10, and then 16 points. The 16 points was earlier this season. In that game, he did it in only 23 minutes. So Josh Giddy, don't mind that. The matchup is difficult, don't get me wrong, but Memphis, their lineup is going in and out all the time. How they defend a certain position doesn't bother me. Vince Williams is a very good defender, but I can guarantee you Vince Williams will not be wasted on someone like Josh Giddy. 
he might see Luke Kennard, to be honest. So Josh Giddy points prop, I don't mind that. His assist prop, three and a half. He's covered this in six out of his last 10. He's covered this in three straight games against Memphis, but barely covering in his last two. His rebound prop is at six and a half. He's covered in four of his last 10 and two of his last three against Memphis. Has had some big rebounding games, but yeah, it's a little bit all over the place. So for me, the points prop is probably what I'd consider playing for this. I'm just going to take note of that. Giddy points. Let's get giddy. All right, J-Dub, Jalen Williams. Let's check him out right here. Points prop, 18 and a half. Matchup is on the difficult side. He's covered in six out of his last 10, and he's gone under in all four games that he's played against the Grizzlies. So that's quite interesting. Looking at his assist, the line's at three and a half. Five out of his last 10, he's gone over. He's gone over in three of his last four against the Grizz, despite having a difficult matchup. And his rebounds at four and a half, three of his last 10, and he's covered in one of his last four against Memphis. So, yeah, not feeling Jalen Williams too much in this game. Uh, who else is there? Lou Dort. I only wanted to check his first quarter, really. So it caught my eye a little bit earlier. So his points prop, nine and a half. He's covered in four of his last 10. He does have a good matchup, though. But checking out his first quarter points, check this out. Two and a half points. He's covered this in nine out of his last 10 games. How wild is that? And against the Grizzlies, he's covered in his last two. So he scored eight points in the first quarter the last time these guys played. So I'm strongly considering it. He plays at least eight minutes in the first quarter. I'm going to dive in a little bit deeper, but at the moment, I'm definitely leaning towards taking it. We can probably have a first quarter parlay. I'll probably take Tobias Harris under first quarter points. So if I can find some others, we'll do a first quarter parlay if that sounds interesting. Chet Holmgren, let's check him out. Up against Jaron Jackson Jr. In his last 10 games, he's covered this line six times. In head-to-head -head matchups, he scored 17 points against the Memphis Grizzlies last time. If you look at his assist prop, that's at two and a half. Five of his last 10 went under against the Grizz. And his rebound prop, eight and a half, covering in six of his last 10. Does have a good matchup, but only had six rebounds against the Grizzlies last time. All right. So we're jumping to the last game, and must I say, thank God it is a last game, because I'm now on an hour and 10 minutes, and I'm starting to get a little bit fatigued, but for you, I will. I'm going to ramp up the energy just for this very last game. So it's the Minnesota Timberwolves versus the Los Angeles Lakers. As usual, LeBron James, Anthony Davis are game-time decisions in this one. Anthony Edwards is a game-time decision as well. So we'll start with these Minnesota Timberwolves, and then we'll get to the Lakers in a second. Mike Conley, his points prop, 13 and a half. The matchup's not too bad against LA. He's covered in four out of his last 10. He's actually covered this points prop, though, in five consecutive games against the Los Angeles Lakers. That's interesting. Mike Conley is capable of shooting a few threes, but in his last 10, he's only hit this twice. He does have a good matchup, and he's hit this in four of his last five games against the Los Angeles Lakers. His assist prop is at six and a half. He's covered in three of his last 10. The matchup's not bad. He's covered in three of five against LA. And rebound-wise, what are we looking at? Two and a half, I'm guessing? Two and a half. Two and a half, seven out of his last 10, and he's got it in four of his last five against LA. So that's not too bad. I'm not, it's not giving him the same juju that I'm looking for, but the, the matchup's not too bad in his stats. Rudy Gobert. The matchup's not too bad against LA. He's only come this line in two of his last 10, 16 and a half points. Against the Lakers, though, he's gone under in three consecutive games, but Kyle Anthony Towns is not there, and his points production does go up without Cat. He's like, oh, oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I wasn't joking when I said I was tired. Oh. Let me shake that off. Let's get into it. Uh, Rudy's rebound prop. His rebound prop is at 15 and a half. What is this world coming to? He's hit this in six out of his last 10 games. Has a good matchup against LA. Has gone under in four consecutive game, games against the Lakers. But my man's getting busy these days. Check out those rebound numbers. Yeah, so I'm not man enough to take the over there. I'm not saying it goes under, but yeah, I'm not game. Anthony Edwards. Let's check this guy out. I still can't get over the block that he did. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. So his points prop is at 30 and a half. He's covered this in four of his last 10 games. He does have an ankle injury that he's managing, but the matchup isn't too difficult against LA. 
Fortunately, Anthony Edwards has covered this line in one of his last six games against the Lakers. He scored 31 points when they last played. Looking at his three-point market, the line's at 2.5, minus 150, five of his last 10, and only two of his last six against the Lakers. Turning to his assists, the line's at 4.5. He's covered in four of his last 10. Does have a good matchup. It's only covered in two of his last six against LA. And then his rebound props at 5.5, four of his last 10 and two of his last six against the Lakers. So Anthony Edwards, but his numbers usually look like this, right? He's pretty inconsistent. You just got to get him on the right game. No one else really jump into there. So Kyle Anderson, everything's going to point to an under, but he's now going to get a lot more minutes. So that's going to be a different, difficult one to pick. Just, just as a heads up, if you guys are using Outlier, you'll probably see Kyle Anderson's name come up for suggestions to bet the under. But I wouldn't bet the under because he gets a lot more action with no Kyle Anthony Towns. Jumping into the Los Angeles Lakers now, D'Lo, he went absolutely crazy in that last game against the Milwaukee Bucks. 44 points. My man could not miss from deep. So he does have a difficult matchup here against Minnesota, though. He's covered in seven out of his last 10 games. But against the Timberwolves, he's gone under in four straight. His three-point market, you're looking at three, three and a half if you want some plus money. He's covered in four of his last 10 and he's gone under in four consecutive games against the Timberwolves. Also, just he's just off the back of that massive game against Milwaukee. I doubt the Timberwolves let that happen again. Looking at his assist prop, that's at five and a half. He's covered in six of his last ten. Has covered in three of his last four against the Wolves. And what else do we have? His rebound market. Three and a half, five out of his last ten to match up one or four against the Wolves. So I personally, what am I thinking here? I don't know. I'm thinking of maybe just taking the under on his PRA. It's only at 26 and a half. And at 26 and a half, he's covered in seven of his last 10. So there hasn't been a reaction from this big game. Obviously, LeBron was out, so that's probably easy for most casual people to understand. But yeah, this line appears low. He hits it quite often. He's only hit it once against the, the Minnesota Timberwolves in the past. So could be a trap line. Could be a trap line. I'm not willing to play it, though. Nothing on D-Lo from me. Let's check out Stone Cold Steve Austin Reeves. So he's got a tough matchup. He's probably he's covered in four straight, six of his last ten. He's covered in two of his last six against the Timberwolves. His three-point market, that's at one and a half. He's covered in eight out of his last ten games. Tough matchup against the Wolves, and he's covered in two of his last six, going under three straight. So no for Austin Reeves. You can do this. You can fucking do this. LeBron James, give me the energy, my boy. So... His line's at 24 and a half. I like this already. He's covered in eight of his last 10 games. Excellent. He just had a night off, so he should be well rested. In head-to-head matchups, he's covered in three out of his last four against the Minnesota Timberwolves. This game is being played in LA as well. So, yeah, I don't mind that for LeBron. Looking at his three-point market, the line's at one and a half. Has covered in eight of his last 10 games. and But against the Wolves, he's only covered in one of his last four. His assist line's at seven and a half. Woo! He's covered this in nine consecutive games. That's pretty good. But check this out. He's gone under his assist prop in four consecutive games against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Rebound-wise, lines at six and a half. He's covered this in four of his last ten. But against the Wolves, he's covered in three out of his last four. This game was this season, and this game was this season. So, yeah, his rebound prop I probably wouldn't take. But out of all this, probably his points prop is what I'm leaning on the most. Jumping into Anthony Davis. So, his points prop, 22 and a half. They're up against Rudy Gobert, so somewhat difficult matchup. He's covered this in five of his last 10, but check this out. Five consecutive games now, he's been feeding the Timberwolves. That's pretty cool. That's interesting. I don't mind that. Anthony Davis. Yeah, just a bit quiet recently. Eh? I don't understand this guy. But he does destroy the Timberwolves. Looking at his rebound props, 12 and a half. He's covered in six of his last 10, and he's... Covered in three of five against the Timberwolves. Assist-wise, four of his last ten games, three of his last five against the Timberwolves. So his points prop probably intrigues me the most. It intrigues me. I'm not saying I'm going to take it because, yeah, he can just go real quiet for no reason. But when you see numbers like this across two different seasons, so um, he's already versed the Timberwolves twice this season, I believe. Yep, this one and this one, both in December. He scored 31 and 33 points in those games, and both of those are road games too. Now, he's back at LA. Yeah, I'm not too sure. 
Look, I think he does hit it, but I don't trust this guy, so I'm not betting on him. Let's put it that way. So just checking the time of the recording. We're up to, or well, I'm up to, not we. And I don't know if somebody's sitting through here watching the whole thing, but an hour and 17 points. See how cooked I am? An hour and 17 minutes is what I was meant to say. Not an no, hour and 17 points. My Lord. But look, we're getting some absolute bangers these days. I think 20 units profit over the last three days. This new way of working is working for me. It's the same research, but now I'm not overthinking it. I'm really just running on a vibe and level of arousal. So if I'm getting aroused by something, you know I'm going to bet it. Um, also, yesterday I tried the... I brought back the value plays. So for those who've been watching for quite some time, I was very profitable doing those value plays, which is pretty much the same game parlay. It's one player, but you pick three of their props. You try to determine over in points or under in rebounds, over in assists. When you combo those together, you get about plus 600, plus 500 odds. Um, so I'll be looking at more of those. Given the different types of plays that I'm going to be doing, I'll give you guys some unit recommendations. As you all know, I run two units on my single bets. Depending on the odds of the parlays, it's between one, one. And for these value type of players, I only play half a unit on them anyway because they're risky as shit. But it does make it a little bit fun. And when they bang, we get paid. So I'll have a pinned comment with all of that in there. I am a bit tired, but I'm still going to get make sure I get it done tonight. I don't overthink things these days anyway. So the hardest part is typing it all up really so you guys can get on. Um, as always, other reminders, outlier. Um, Seven-day free trial in the video description. There's also a link to BetUS. They've got a deposit match at the moment. First three deposits is 125%. So if you haven't signed up already, go check them out. And the other thing is if you've made it this far, I just want to get you – I honestly want to get your opinion on this because I've got two videos planned up, and I want to know which one you want to see first. So the first video is going to be called The Truth About Parlays. And that's where I dive a little bit deeper into the truth, the numbers, and whether you should be playing it. And I might talk about strategy. So The Truth About Parlays is one video. And then the second video is going to be called, well, I don't know if it's going to be called this, but what it's about is, it's going. To, let's just say it's going to be called How to Guarantee Profit with Your Bonus Bets. So I've got two different strategies that you guys can use when you have bonus bets. Uh, one of them's a lot more risky with a bigger return. One of them guarantees a return, to be honest. So, but yeah, I've got two two videos: um, how to win more money with bonus bets and the truth about betting parlays. So, let me know in the comment section which one of those videos would you like to see, and then that'll be the first one that I'll work on and ultimately release. But look, I'm sure if you've been here and sat through the one hour and fifteen or twenty minutes. You're sick of hearing my voice and seeing my face, so I'll get the fuck out of here. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Stay blessed. Peace. Sub to the channel because your boy's getting busy. Coming to you live from the west side of Sydney. We've got the free picks and the juice and the daily. It's all free. You don't even have to pay me.